Australia is in the grip of a mining boom, but not everyone here in the Bowen Basin is sharing the spoils. Moran Bar was built in the 1970s to service mines in the area. The population has exploded as the number of coal mines has grown. Sandra and Owen Wallace moved here 32 years ago to work for mining companies. Well, it's gone from a small mining town of about 4,000 people to a rather large mining town of about 10 to 11,000 people now. The smaller town was more community-minded. Um, because of the drive-in, drive-out and the fly-in, fly-out, the locals actually are lesser in number. So it's a lot harder to mix with people. Moran Bar has an unemployment rate of just 1%, but that also means local businesses are struggling to find workers. It's the mining wages. We can't compete. They do long hours. We don't do, obviously, the hours they do. But, yeah, we can't compete against their wage. There's just no way. And everyone wants to go to the mines. Yeah, it's definitely a two-speed economy. You know, we've got uh, the high wages within the mining industry and then we have the, uh, the average wage, like council wages or uh, service industry wages, and we can't compete uh, with the uh, remuneration packages they have in the mining industry. Those big packages have been snapped up by an army of around 7,000 fly-in, fly-out and drive-in, drive-out workers commuting from Brisbane or centres like Mackay and the Sunshine Coast. The so-called FIFOs and DIDOs mostly work 12-hour shifts and have little time to spend money in town. And the influx has sent rental costs soaring. I can't subsidise the rent of my staff. Well, I haven't got any staff because we can't get any, but you know, I can't afford to subsidise the rent at $1,500, $2,000 a week. You know, I don't pay them that much. Some homes fetch over $3,000 per week in rent and three and four bedroom family homes are selling for around a million dollars. This property went under contract a few weeks ago. It's now unconditional and it's due to settle on Monday. Um, the contract price is 920000 which was the asking price. Um, so we're finding that not a lot of properties um, are, are even having to negotiate. Um, this property is rented at 3200 a week um, and that's secured for two years, which started in February. Um, the home consists of four bedrooms, the main has an ensuite, it's fully air conditioned throughout. It's about seven years old, there's a big colour bond shed at the back as well. And you were telling me before that you sold a house across the road, um, can you tell me about that? It's just over this way isn't it? Yes, um, probably this time last year, so 12 months ago, the house across the road sold for 680000 uh, Very, very similar style home, the only difference is that one doesn't have a shed. Um, so 920 for this one um, now, which does have a shed, so there's quite a big difference there. Mining companies are building furiously to house their commuting workforce. 7,000 camp rooms or dongers have sprung up in Moranbar. Mining companies more glamorously call them single person villas and there are plans for another 6,000. We spend about $30 million a year on third party rents for our employees in this part of the region. So again that's part of the sort of the economic contribution that we make to the region. But at the sort of rentals that we've seen in recent times, we can't uh, justify putting new employees into those sorts of um, rental arrangements. So we're um, right at the moment um, prioritising our, our new builds and the refurbishment of our existing housing to people who, who are coming off leases that are, um, that are expiring. They've land bank plenty of land for themselves, but um, you know, if you don't work in the, uh, for the mine, uh, then you can't get, you know, there's just no land here. This crane in the centre of Moranbar is an indication of how the town is desperately trying to catch up with the mining boom. Developers here are now building up rather than out because the land surrounding the town is taken up by mining leases. It's been uh, a while coming because people have been used to the traditional big backyard, um, four bedroom home or three bedroom home. So um, now that we've got people uh, that are actually investing in that space, I think we'll probably see a little bit more of it. Local MP Shane Canute says governments are happy to milk the area for mining revenue, but are loath to return it. 
What we're seeing is over a billion dollars of gross revenue coming out of this region, but we're receiving the crumbs of, crumbs in return. What we want is affordable accommodation. We want um, you know medical services. We want you know uh, to see doctors, nurse, nurses, people um, uh, in a situation where now we've got such a rich area, you know, but are forced to go to Mackay or Rockhampton just to receive medical services. There is uh, a lot of royalty that goes out of this region into um, state government, so the state government is the beneficiary from, from that royalty, and we'd like to see our fair share back into uh, the Isaac Regional Council area. Sandra and Owen Wallace say the community feel of Moran Bar isn't completely gone, and they've resisted selling their house for big money. Um, that's that's the cho a, a choice we have made, simply because we like the lifestyle here, it's hassle free, um, very quiet town usually. I can drive from one side of town to the other in five minutes. Mm. I can go to the dump in two. You know, <laughs> and the dump's still free. <laughs> <laughs> the federal inquiry into Australia's fly in fly out workforce is due to report back later this year. Amy Bainbridge, Late Line.